Sukiya zakari is one type of Japanese residential architectural style. Suki means refined, well-cultivated taste and delight in elegant pursuits and refers to enjoyment of the exquisitely performed tea ceremony. The word originally denoted a building in which tea ceremony was done known as a chashitsu and was associated with ikebana flower arranging, and other Japanese traditional arts. It has come to indicate a style of designing public facilities and private homes based on tea house aesthetics. It is characterized by a use of natural materials. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins. In 1587, Toyotomi Hideyoshi (1536–98) employed the tea master Sen no Rikyu as his advisor on aesthetic matters. In the compound of Hideyoshi's imposing Jurakudai Castle in Kyoto Rikyu designed an 18-mat building known as the Colored Shoan which was thought to be the first example of Sukiya Zakari architecture, the style developed during rest of the Azuki Mamoyama period 1568 and was characterized by small rooms of usually four and a half tatami, or even less, that had a tokonoma and shelves. These buildings were normally entered through a garden often by means of an indirect curved or diagonal path that would not allow an instant view of the teahouse. Sukiya Zakari architecture incorporates teahouse aesthetics and encompasses all sorts of building types including private dwellings, villas, restaurants and inns. One of the best known examples is the Katsura Detached Palace in Kyoto. In the Edo period 1600 to 1868, Sukiya Zakari became popular among townspeople, and the majority of houses came to be built in this style. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with similar styles. In the Azuki Mamoyama period, not only Sukiya style but the contrasting Shōen Zakari of residences of the warrior class developed. While Sukiya was a small space, simple and austere, Shōen Zakari style was that of large, magnificent reception areas, the setting for the pomp and ceremony of the feudal lords. As an example, in a Shōen, the flower arrangement in the tokonoma is indicative of the relative wealth of the host, the guest however sits with their back to it as it is not meant for their enjoyment. Whereas, in a tea room, the guest sits facing the tokonoma and enjoys its beauty, a comparison with Shōen Zakari makes clear the defining stylistic features of Sukiya Zakari. The ''freeze rails'' called Nageshi connect grooved, square columns in Shōen Zakari, the transom is often elaborately carved, the ceiling is coffered or railed with a hexagonal rail and the wall surfaces are finished and often decorated with murals. The toko alcove, tana shelves and shōen built-in desk are arranged according to a fixed formula. In contrast, Sukiya Zakari often uses unsquared columns, even simple polished tree trunks, or wood with the bark in place for the nakabashira central column. The walls are simply finished with a natural earthen plaster, and any carving in the ranma transom is kept simple. The ceiling of boards is railed with flat, rectangular boards. Although there is a tokonoma alcove and tana shelves and maybe also shown in the main room, their arrangement and treatment are free. The beauty of Sukiya Zakari comes from the delicate sensibility of the slender wood elements and other natural materials used, and the simplicity of ornamentation, if any. <laughs> <laughs> development In the colored Shōen teahouse Sen no Rikyu stained the timbers with a mixture of Bengal red dye and black dye to make them look sooty and old. In contrast, his students Oribe and Enshu preferred brighter colors and natural finishes. It is thought that this change coincided with the development of the regular wood plane that allowed a more consistent finish to wood and a better appreciation of the natural qualities of unfinished wood. It is a trait that has characterized the Sukiya style since, after the Meiji Restoration in 1867 the samurai class and thus the Shōen style lost its reason for being whereas the Sukiya style continued to develop and was reassessed for modernist architecture. The Sukiya style requires a subtle harmony between the principles required in its construction, these include the relationship between the client, the architect and the carpenter. Both the architect and the carpenter should have a profound understanding of the materials employed. There is an example of a carpenter asked to build a Sukiya style house declining because he lost his tools in World War II and he felt that he would not be in a position to work satisfactorily. Writing in 1934, the architect Isoya Yoshida encouraged architects to design in the Sukiya style using modern materials. 
He said that it was important to display the natural characteristics of the wood although it would be a mistake to use anything that might catch the eye as this was not in the spirit of the style. Influence <inaudible> 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 During the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893, a small Nippon tea house was built near the North Pond that was designed in a loose version of the Sukiya style. Harper's Weekly, a national magazine, ran an article in March 1893 showing the construction of the Japanese contributions to the exhibition. The Chicago-based magazine Inland Architect also devoted two articles to it in the winter of 1892 3rd so it is likely that local architects were familiar with the work. The historian Dimitri Sellos first identified the Nippon Tea House as a possible influence on Frank Lloyd Wright, suggesting that the low pitched double roof forms of the prairie houses as having similar forms as the tea house roof. In 1934, in his Okada residence, the architect Sutemi Horiguchi blended elements of the Sukiya style influenced from the Katsura detached palace in the garden to help fuse Western and Oriental aspects of the plan. In 1954, Walter Gropius, founder of the Bauhaus, visited Katsura detached Attached palace and was so struck by it that in 1960 he co authored Katsura, Tradition and Creation Japanese Architecture with Kenzo Tange. Most characteristic of the spirit of the conception is the path to the entrance gate of the villa. It conforms to the favorite Zen approach, which is rarely direct, axial, and symmetrical. There is a decided distaste for the imposing straight avenue, instead, there is a preference for the intimate and casual but carefully planned approach which supplies surprises at every turn and leads up to the main objective in a human, natural, unimposing manner. Gropius, W. 1968. Apollo in Democracy. The Cultural Obligation of the Architect. McGraw-Hill Book Company, p. 126 Footnotes <laughs> <laughs>